This is Ken Hans, best storyteller in Texas, saying of the day, a war is never done. Uh, that was a saying that uh, President Lincoln had that, that, you know, it's over, but it's not over. You still got stuff to do. Today is June 19th, Juneteenth in, in uh, Texas. And uh, on this day in 1865, Major General Gordon Granger uh, arrived in uh, Galveston uh, with over 1,000 troops to make sure the enforcement, the Emancipation Proclamation was enforced. And some people that uh, had uh, uh, slaves in Texas had just act like the war wasn't over. And, uh, you know, and, and so th- that changed. And, uh, and that was an important day. It's now recognized as a holiday. There were people that had not been told. And uh, many were told uh, after the, the general, right, that you can stay in place, but you had to be paid. And the owners, the uh, slave owners at that time, don't, you don't own those people, and you got to pay them. And, and, um, and so it, it was a gradual thing. You know, and, and I point out one of the things, the first place that uh, people that had been slaves were paid the same as people who had not been slaves was in West Texas on the ranches and uh, the cowboys. And they got paid X number of dollars a day, whether they were white or black or whatever. And, uh, and that, it was true equality. And that those ranchers were looking at somebody could ride and rope and uh, they, they weren't caught up in a, in a bunch of politics. Uh, I talked to uh, Walter Binger, a friend of mine who's a, a historian here at the University of Texas, and he was talking about it, and it's written a lot that a lot of people talk about states' rights. The war really was over a, a, a state right of whether they had slavery, and it was over slavery. Uh, it wasn't over whether they could uh, have the laws on criminal laws or, or you know, uh, what they could uh, do, manufacturing or anything like that. It, it, it was a, a slavery issue, and it, and it just built and built and built and came to a head, and it uh, was not going to go away. And uh, not very many countries ever, ever had a civil war and still had a republic of democracy established after that. It says a lot about the United States. And that, uh, that, but that was a big day, and that uh, uh, it's a big day uh, even now. But June the nineteenth was also a history day, and that's the day in eighteen eighty five the French delivered the uh, Statue of Liberty, which is on Liberty Island, which is right next to Ellis Island. And uh, if you go, go see both. Uh, Ellis Island's where they uh, processed all the immigrants coming in. And some of the people, their names now, the family names, uh, somebody misspelled something in Ellis Island has never been corrected. And uh, I, I think one of the uh, great national monuments we have is the Statue of Liberty. I would encourage people to take their family. And you can, they, it's just really a fun tour because you can type in a family name and find out when they came through or, where they came through, where they left, when they were from Ellis Island, where did they wind up? And uh, it it was, you know, uh, that day's a big day. And the third thing that happened on June the 19th was in 1947, and that was when the Marshall Plan was adopted uh, and that the, the Secretary of State from France and uh, Great Britain and the United States and uh, General Marshall was a, a Secretary of State, and they came up with a Marshall Plan that wound up costing $14.5 billion. And that was a lot of money. And the purpose of it, they brought 22 countries together from Europe, and most of them Western Europe, to make sure that their economies were revitalized. And, and that's the reason you've still got democracies in those places, and it was, it was so important that, that after a war, a war is never done, but after the World War II, the Marshall Plan saved Europe from going over to the communists. And so it, it was so important 
Uh, and I've, I've got a lot of friends that, that believe that we should never get involved in any war outside the United States, and I disagree with that, that they want to just leave everything alone. You look at, and, and the, I know that pulling the troops out of Afghanistan was, was terrible, and the way they did it was even worse. Uh, but if, if you look at South Korea, Germany, and Japan, three of our greatest allies, we still have troops in those three countries, and in, in their democracies. And, and the republic is strong because we, we spent a little money on that, and the Marshall Plan changed our foreign policy, and the GI Bill changed our domestic policy. More people were able to go to college and get a degree in the 40s and 50s as a result of the GI Bill. Uh, so, I mean, it, it really expanded the scope of so many people. But uh, after World War II was over, you look at the two biggest things that happened after that war was the Marshall Plan and the GI Bill. And it cost a little money, but it was a great investment uh, by the United States during that time. So June 19th today is uh, quite a remarkable day, a lot of history. Uh, Major General uh, Gordon Granger showed up and said, you know, slaves are free and made sure that that was implemented. And 20 years later, we get the Statue of Liberty, and then in 1947, the Marshall Plan, the implementation of it. And, and the people that worked on the Marshall Plan, that, that wasn't a partisan deal, you know, a long time ago, rarely did you have partisanship on foreign policy. And they'd get together and figure out, you know, what they were going to do on foreign policy. And the result would be that the other countries that were involved in foreign policy throughout the world, they knew that that was a set policy by the United States, by Democrats and Republicans. And uh, only in the, really in the 70s, uh, 60s and 70s, did you start having a lot of fights? I was reading some things uh, this week, and there's one about weddings. And said so the average cost, the average cost of a wedding is $29,000 now. You know, nobody goes to the JP anymore. Uh, they go down to the JP, and they had a, a JP in, in Lubbock, and uh, they, they, had to, they had to bring some action. He would keep the marriage license and tell them, you know, if it doesn't work out, y'all can come back to me and divorce won't cost but ten, fifteen dollars. <laughs> so you can't do that, you know. Then and uh but uh uh the average cost being twenty nine I mean there's some of them are gonna be zero or a hundred dollars or five hundred dollars, something like that. Uh, but that's a lot of money and that's a huge industry. You look at uh I know the Ken Hans Chapel in, in Lubbock in the summer, especially in June, we have a lot of weddings on Fridays and Saturdays. And one time we had uh, three in one day. I had one on Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. There's, there's run them through there. And um, there, there's a lot of places you can have them, whether it's churches or whatever. One of the first things that a woman does and her mother, they start looking for locations. And they, they always want one that's going to be large enough. It always reminds you, don't always get one so large that it doesn't look like anybody's there. Uh, you know, so there are times that you, you may. I, I know in political events, we'd have events sometimes we'd invite a lot of people to, and it wouldn't show you. You didn't want it to look bad. And I had a deal when I was running for Congress. One of my staff members, Ricky Knox, and I may have mentioned this before, he set up a, a fundraiser for me in Odessa, and it was on a Monday night uh, at the same time the uh, Washington Redskins and the, the Dallas Cowboys were playing uh, football on TV. And, and we sent out like 2,000 invitations. And the guy that was having his house, he told 2,000 people, we can't handle that. And the guy, my guy said, don't worry. It would be about 100, 150. And I think they had 140 or something like that. And, and for weeks, I'd go someplace in Odessa, and somebody would say, I'm sorry I missed your fundraiser. I was tied up. You know, I wasn't feeling well. Had somebody. I knew what they were doing. They watched the football game, which is fine with me. And some of them sent. Had a guy one time tell me, he said, I can't come, and I know it's $500 to be a host. He said, if I give a 1000 would would I get an excused absence? 
And I, I thought about it for a time after that to put on the invitation, $1,000 if you don't want to come and 500 if you do, and uh, uh, to see if that would, in effect, uh, raise more money. But uh, in, in any political event, if you're going to have a smaller turnout the, than you anticipate. In any event in this day and time, uh, there's so much for people to do. I mean, they can sit in their living room and watch 300 channels or 1,000 channels and see anything they want to. Another thing that happened last week, uh, Pat Sajak announced that he's going to retire after this season. And uh, the Wheel of Fortune, I'm telling you, if you're running for office and you want to get endorsed, Pat Sajak or Vanna White would be better for you than, than well-known political figures because everybody knows them. And, uh, but he worked a total, I believe it was, 48 days and made $15 million. They'd, they'd work filming uh, for 48 days and that, uh, made $15 million. Of course, he had speaking events and endorsements and things like that. But they turned that, you know, he was a weather guy at one time on the TV station in Los Angeles, and they turned in that into one of the most popular programs uh, of REM, especially game shows. Uh, I always still like to watch it and see if I can guess what the name is. And I, I get, I watch Jeopardy sometimes, but Jeopardy, you better be on your A plan. You know, I mean, it, it's it's not gonna, you know, if if you if you're a dummy, uh, it's gonna point it out to you real real quick. You have to be good. That's what I call free time. Uh, everybody needs some free time where they can forget forget all their other problems. Um, I always like sporting events. College World Series started. TCU got beat by Oral Roberts on Friday, and that was that was a big shock. TCU had won about twenty three out of twenty five games. They were on a roll. They were hot, and uh, you know, the law of averages will catch up with you at some point in time, and it caught up with them. But they were the only Big Twelve and the only Texas team. In the College World Series, usually there'll be two or three teams. One year, a uh, few years ago, Tech and TCU and University of Texas were all were all in the College World Series. Omaha, you know, that's a beautiful stadium, and and uh, it, but it, if you go, you know, and some people go and they go to every game. Boy, that, I bumped into a couple uh, from California, Southern California, and they'd been going for like thirty years. And uh, even if they didn't have a team, they, they were Southern Cal people. But they'd go to the College World Series for every year and stay two weeks and uh, go to every game and uh, look at the roster and knew every player, had their own scorebook. You know, they, they were into it. Uh, but uh, back to the marriages, uh, I went to a wedding in Mexico, and uh, a guy on the Forbes uh, billionaire list was marrying a rich lady from from uh, Mexico, and uh, they, they spent, uh, I was told they spent $5 million on a wedding. It lasted a week, and there were parties every night, and there'd be a brunch in the morning and dance that night, and, I mean, it was big time. The president of Mexico was there, and a couple of bishops, and, and the dance floor uh, went out into the gulf, and uh, the, the waves would be, lapping around you close to your feet as uh, you were dancing. And I bumped into a guy, and my wife and I were dancing, we bumped into a guy from Demet, Texas. Uh, Jim Bradford was there at the wedding, and uh, I didn't expect to bump into somebody from Demet, Texas. And a friend of mine, Robert Brown from El Paso, had a, he had a room in the hotel that was next door to the dance floor, and they had a, they had a, a speaker that was right next to his room, and the speaker was six feet tall and about three feet wide. And the next morning I saw him, and I, I said, well, uh, where are you, what are you going to do today? And he said, I'm going to a dentist, try to get my fillings put back in. He said, the vibrations were so bad, I lost all my fillings out of my teeth. So uh, Robert Brown had to uh, you know, get his fillings uh, put back in. Pretty funny. But his weddings, you're talking about $5 million. And then last year, two years ago, there was a wedding here in Austin. Somebody spent $3 million on. And so, I mean, that's a big event, big event. I, you know, if I were the kids or something, I'd say, well, just go ahead and give me $2 million. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll cut it down and, and uh, let us invest that money. Only cost of a wedding that's gone down the last 30 years is the men's attire. The renting a tuxedo is 3% lower than it was. 
and uh, wedding dresses are 50 percent. Of course, you know you can rent a wedding dress now, just like you could rent a tux and get married in it, and, and then give it back to them. And uh, so it, it's it, it's big business and produces a lot of jobs and a lot of opportunities for people. And I forget the name of the movie where John McCain he played a walk walk on part. Uh, the the wedding or something. And these guys they'd just go bust weddings. That they'd go to the party. The wedding crashers, they'd show up, and they'd drink their whiskey and eat their food and hustle the girls and dance and have a heck of a time. And uh, there was uh, one scene in there where John McCain was a U.S. senator, and it showed him at the wedding, and these wedding crashers wanted to meet him, and they went over and got their picture taken with him. There's a story came out where a woman got laid off. She wasn't fired, but they let the position go. And she took pictures of herself all over the office and then photocopied them and numbered them on the back and pasted them all in the restroom, in a copy room, in people's offices. She went up on the weekend, did it. And, I mean, that's hilarious in that uh, they didn't know what to do about it. And they kept looking to see if, you know, I've got number 22 slash over number 14 and, what what number? You know they were trying to locate them all, and that uh, that was her uh, signature of saying bye. I don't. I doubt they gave her a letter recommendation in the future, but it was pretty funny that uh, she left her. You know, and and she'd have little bubbles, you know, above her head about what she's saying. You know, bye now. Gonna miss y'all and things like that. And people would find them all. And she put some in people's desk, you know, and they, you'd open your desk, and there their picture was saying bye now. Have a good time. And uh, so it's pretty unusual uh, for someone to, for, for the way they uh, depart. In closing, uh, it's Ken Hans, best storyteller in Texas, and talked about June 19th today. A lot of history, uh, a lot of things that we need to remember and need to know, and that a war is never done. Uh, there are still things happening from every war that comes about, and that it takes a long time for it to end. 